In our busy world, family time frequently gets neglected. It is vital that we give attention to our families while we can, and it is especially important to give attention to what God says in His Word about our homes. For the next few minutes, let's join Scott Pauley as we open the Scriptures and find God's message for your family. Many years ago, we chose, I believe we're divinely led, uh, to this expression, enjoying the journey. Uh, for all of our resources and our studies, uh, the idea is we know we're going to enjoy heaven. We know we're going to enjoy the destination, but God has designed it so that his followers can also enjoy the journey. And how do we enjoy the journey? We enjoy the journey with him. It's the presence of Christ. Well, in no other place, I think, is this more vividly seen than in the story we're studying in Luke chapter number 24. Because, as we established last time, this is a married couple making a journey from Jerusalem to Emmaus, dealing with difficulty, dealing with hardship, which we all have, but learning that the companionship of Christ radically changes everything. Oh, dear friend, would you look for Jesus along the way today? I promise you, along your path, Christ himself is drawing near He's wanting to be known to you. And really, the story in Luke 24 not only teaches us how to enjoy the journey, it teaches us how to enjoy the journey together. Because I remind you, this couple is together when they meet Christ. They're together when Christ speaks to them. They're together uh, when their hearts are lifted. And I believe God wants to do His highest, holiest work in our homes your home, dear friend, is to be holy ground because of the presence of God. And so today and in our next study, I'd like to walk you through this story and just give you some practical ways that you can enjoy the journey together. Let's begin at the beginning of the story. Verse 13 of Luke 24 says, And behold, two of them went that same day to a village called Emmaus, which was from Jerusalem, about three score furlongs, and they talked together of all these things which had happened. And it came to pass that while they communed together and reasoned, Jesus himself drew near and went with them, but their eyes were holden that they should not know him. And he said unto them, What manner of communications are these that ye have one to another as you walk and are sad? Let's begin with the most obvious thing, the most practical thing, and it is this. If you want to enjoy the journey together, number one, you enjoy the journey together by communicating, communing with one another. Notice, please, they're not just walking along in silence. They're pouring out their heart to each other. They're talking to one another. Could I recommend that in your marriage, that with your family, that with your children, it's important to talk? We're living in a world today where people are doing everything except communicating with each other. We're the most connected and the most disconnected generation in history. Look at the average family. Everybody's looking at some mobile device, but few are talking to one another. And so I want to recommend talk together. Now turn the noise off for a little while and just talk to the person that lives in your home. Share your hearts with one another. Do you remember in marriage what we said, for better or for worse? And that means on the glad days and on the sad days. And frankly, this couple in Luke 24, they're, they're walking a sad trail. They're on a, a mournful mile marker at this particular juncture, and yet they're talking. There is something very practical, too, about walking and talking. If you take a walk, uh, that might be a good place to start because it gets you away from all the distractions. It's just the two of you along the road. I think sometimes we're all too busy and too distracted. And if I could give this one admonition, it would be this. Be careful who you share your heart with. I find that so often husbands begin sharing their heart with someone outside their home. Wives begin sharing their heart with someone outside their marriage, and pretty soon they've given their heart away, or at least a portion of their heart away, to the wrong person. Do you know how you give your heart away? Through your mouth, through your talking. Read the story of Samson. He told her all his heart. Guard your most intimate, private, personal conversations. 
your deepest thoughts, emotions, desires, dreams, heartaches, all of that should be shared with your family. And so if you want to enjoy the journey together, begin by communicating to one another, but don't stop there. If the story stops there, they're still sad. Number two, if you want to enjoy the journey together, begin to communicate with Jesus. Did you notice that when the Lord showed up, he didn't show up telling them something. Instead, he begins by asking them, why are you sad? Why are you talking this way? Now listen to the answer, verse 18. And the one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answering said unto him, Art thou only a stranger in Jerusalem, and hast not known the things which are come to pass there in these days? And he said unto them, What things? There's a beautiful divine humor in this. They didn't recognize him, and Jesus plays along. And they said unto him, Concerning Jesus of Nazareth, which was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how the chief priest and our rulers delivered him to be condemned to death and have crucified him, but we trusted. Do you hear the past tense here? We trusted that it had been he which should have redeemed Israel. And beside all this, today's the third day since these things were done. Yea, and certain women also of our company made us astonished, which were early at the sepulcher. And when they found not his body, they came, saying that they had also seen a vision of angels, which said that he was alive. And certain of them which were with us went to the sepulcher and found it even so as the women had said, but him they saw not. You see how they're still living by sight instead of by faith? Do you see how they're still living by their feelings instead of by faith? Oh, may I just tell you, if you let emotions run your home, emotions will ruin your home. Someone said, for feelings come and feelings go and feelings are deceiving. My hope is in the word of God, not else is worth believing. Don't listen to your feelings. Your feelings will lie to you. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Uh, But what are they doing? They're pouring out their heart to Jesus. That's a great thing to do. Jesus invited them to do that. He wanted them to do that. He wanted them to talk to him. You know what prayer does? Prayer brings Almighty God into the conversation. Casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. He does care for you. Uh, Someone said, it's all right to complain as long as you complain to the one person who can do something about it. Well, that's what they were doing. Maybe you have some complaints in your home. Maybe things aren't going well right now. Here's my recommendation today. Turn your complaint into prayer. Instead of just talking to one another about it ad nauseum, uh, that only goes so far, and frankly, sometimes it makes it worse. Instead of just dwelling on it, instead of just rehashing it to yourself and to your loved ones over and over again, why don't you get down on your knees together and talk to Jesus? Why don't you talk to God and turn it to prayer? Communicate with one another, yes, but then communicate with heaven, communicate with God, pray for one another, share your needs, bear one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. Pray with one another. I think this is something that's sorely missing. I know it has been too many days in our home where we didn't pray with one another nearly enough. Do more than talk among yourselves. Lay it out before the Lord. You know, you can talk to each other until proverbially they say you're blue in the face. And you can accomplish nothing and change nothing. Dear friend, when you begin to pray and talk to God, God can do more in a moment than we can in a lifetime. I have a dear pastor friend who loves to say, don't miss what you can't replace. Well, friend, don't miss what God has given you in your home and don't miss what God has given you through access to God in prayer in your home. Don't miss what you can't replace. If you want to enjoy the journey together, then I recommend two things to you today. First of all, talk to one another, and then turn the conversation heavenward and talk to God. May the Lord help all of us to meet Jesus along our way today. We hope that you will spend some time talking with your family today about these truths from God's Word and spend time praying for each member of your family. You may find additional podcasts, helpful articles, full-length Bible messages, and other resources at enjoyingthejourney.org. Until next time, may God bless you and your family.